movement process is truly magical. You think that the teeth are fused to the bone, cannot be moved, but with gentle pressure and with expert knowledge, we can actually move the teeth into a proper place. Hey guys, how's it going? Dr. Julian here. I'm an orthodontist practicing in Toronto, Canada. And today I wanted to dive into a question which one of my subscribers asked. How do orthodontic treatment, let's say braces or Invisalign, actually move the teeth? I think that's a valid question because tooth, seemingly very hard substance, right? Also inside bone and feels like it's fused to the bone. I just wanted to give you the scientific explanation behind how orthodontics is actually able to move teeth inside your bone. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Teeth, unlike most people think, it's not actually fused to the bone, but it's actually suspended in what's called PDL fibers. It's not completely fused, but it's surrounded by this PDL ligament along with the fluids. Therefore, if you actually go into the mirror and take a look and you push onto the tooth, you could probably see that the tooth actually moves a little bit and that's perfectly normal. What happens is, let's say we put the braces on. What this wire and the brackets are gonna do is apply a force, or like a pressure point. When that pressure is applied, then what happens is the other side of the pressure, it's gonna get compressed, right? And when there's a compression, then the bone will dissolve. Similarly, on the opposite side, there will be some tension there's gonna be deposition of new bone. This way, wherever it's pressed, it's gonna get dissolved. Wherever it's tense, it's gonna deposit new bone. And through this manner, over time, we can slowly move the tooth into where we want to uh, push it to. So let's give an example. For instance, if we are putting in a separator before your expander appliance, we're gonna put the rubber in between the teeth. When that happens, then it's gonna push the teeth away from each other that's going to create an area of compression. In the area of compression, the bone's going to dissolve away and it's going to give room for the tooth to move. Let's give another example. Let's say you're wearing an aligner or an Invisalign tray. You have a tooth that is crooked and out of alignment. Yeah. In this case, when you wear the tray, the tooth that is the most outside here, the one is crooked, it's going to feel a pressure point, right? Or a compression and that's gonna cause the area of compressed area to actually dissolve and the bone's gonna resorb away and that's gonna allow that space where the tooth can actually move into. Throughout this repeated procedure of bone turnover position, we can slowly move the teeth into the perfect place to give you that smile that you want. I mean, tooth movement process is truly magical because at first sight, I mean, you think that the teeth are fused to the bone cannot be moved with gentle pressure, guidance under. With gentle pressure and with expert knowledge, we can actually move the teeth into a proper place. That's a great question. There have been a lot of studies involved looking at how we can move the teeth faster and safely. There's cases where we actually use the vibration device, which you use to vibrate the teeth let's say five, 10 minutes a day, trying to speed up that cellular activities to get the teeth moving faster, or maybe shining a light to activate the cellular processes, or doing a little bit of surgery, let's say, if you can drill a little tiny holes in the bone and to make the bone density a little less in order to move the teeth, that's because everyone's bone, everyone's biology is not the same. Teeth and the cells actually need time for them to move and to do their thing it takes time for the, the mechanism of tooth movement to take place. While it is true that if you have bone loss, let's take an example of a patient with osteoporosis where the bone density is a little bit lower. In theory, the teeth will move faster in those patients, but it's also very likely that they are on a medication that helps to maintain the bone density and that actually counteracts the tooth movement. We are moving the teeth and then, like I told you, when the first step of tooth movement is bone resorption and when the bone actually dissolves away, you're left with a gap and then the teeth moves into place. Therefore, after your treatment is done, it's crucial that we get the retainers in. The type of retainer that we recommend 
are the wire retainers that go behind the front teeth, as well as clear removable retainers, which you're gonna wear at nighttime. This is very important, especially in the first two years, because that's when the teeth and the surrounding tissues develop a new memory because of the elastic fibers, the cellular memory that's associated with those teeth. So they always have that tendency trying to go back to where it was. Therefore, the retainers are very, very important, especially in the first two years. That being said, we usually recommend that you wear the retainers nighttime indefinitely or forever because studies show that the teeth will never lose their memory of their old positions. It's very critical that uh, you keep your retainers for a lifetime if you want to maintain your results. And a lot of these patients actually have implants. Implants, unlike natural teeth, they do not have the PDL. So they're not suspended in bone, they're actually fused to the bone. Therefore, we cannot actually move the implants in the same way that we can move the teeth. Oftentimes, we have to use that implant as a reference and try to move the other teeth around. Or if the implant is really, really poorly positioned, sometimes we do recommend that you get a new implant after the orthodontic treatment is done. In order to prevent things like this from happening, we usually recommend that orthodontic treatment is done first and followed by your implant so that the implant can be placed in the ideal position. I hope that answers your question. If you found this video helpful, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll be back with more helpful tips and videos in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next one.